Well, let me ask Dr. Weber a question. I want to get back, uh, perhaps, to, to medicine away from money just for a moment. Um, how have recent trends, Dr. Weber, in the epidemiology of cardiometabolic conditions impacted those of CVD, ACS, and stroke? You know, this is a fascinating issue because if we look at the epidemiology of what's happened to cardiovascular risk factors, here we have a population that's obese, doesn't exercise for the most part. I mean, some people do, of course, but as a population, we don't, and our children don't. Uh, we're not eating well. All the factors that go into bad epidemiology, high blood pressure, lipid disorders, diabetes, they're all very much at play. Despite that, despite this growing problem of obesity and so forth, we're actually seeing a decline in major cardiovascular events. And that's because we finally have a good grip on what we need to do about hypertension. For example, I remember 15, 20 years ago, we would get reports that only 20, 25 percent of people with hypertension in the United States had their blood pressure anywhere near being controlled. Now it's better than 50 percent. Now, this still means there's a lot of people who don't have good management of their high blood pressure, but we've doubled our success rate. And the same thing would go for cholesterol. We're terrific at reducing LDL cholesterol in most people. We're doing a good job with diabetes, by no means perfect, but a pretty good job. And when you look now at heart attacks and strokes, which were the main killers of people in the United States for so many years, for decades, it still is the main killer, but it is diminishing. And soon another condition, sad to say, uh, cancer, will be the number one cause of death in the United States. It's not that cancer is becoming more prevalent. It's because we are doing a better job at keeping our patients alive despite all of these cardiovascular issues. And we're doing a very good job overall. Of course, we could do a lot better and must do a lot better. But still, I think we can sit back and say, so far, so good. I want to talk for a moment, Dr. Weber, about the initial clinical presentation and its effects on cardiovascular outcomes. For example, let's talk about changes in approaches to treatment or preventive strategies to accommodate a dynamic patient population. Where I think we've made terrific progress has been in getting our hands on more modern pharmaceutical agents that are well tolerated and powerful. It's much easier to treat hypertension now than it was 20 years ago and far, far easier than it was 40 years ago. We now have drugs that basically have no side effects, are very effective. We now have pills that have two or even three very effective, well-tolerated blood pressure medicines in them. So with one pill a day, we can control blood pressure in 80 to 90 percent of people who got hypertension. That was a dream not that many years ago. Likewise with the statins, the new statin drugs used for treating high LDL cholesterol. They not only work very effectively to bring the cholesterol down, but again, just as with good treatment of hypertension, we have seen how doing that reduces the probability of heart attacks, strokes, and other major cardiovascular outcomes. So those are two areas, hypertension and lipid disorders, where modern pharmacotherapeutics has made a huge impact. Diabetes is lagging a little bit. We've had a whole bunch of new diabetes medications, new classes of medications in just the last four, five, six years, and they're very good. They're well tolerated, they're effective, they work well in combination with each other, all the right things, but we haven't had the dramatic breakthroughs there that we've seen in the other risk factors. Yes, it's getting somewhat easier to be able, uh, uh, somewhat easier to control type 2 diabetes, but I don't think we've seen 
quite the breakthrough that we've had with hypertension and lipid disorders. We're still hoping for new and better treatments for diabetes.